Hi students. So today we are going to discuss sub zero treatment process. This heat treatment process is adapted for so many number of materials. So how it is adapted and what is the salient feature of this sub zero treatment process? All these things we are going to discuss in this session. Now let me discuss. the sub zero treatment process and how it is useful for the materials and why this adapted and what is the reason behind sub zero treatment process so all these things we are going to discuss and the various categories also which are available under sub zero treatment process so all these things we are going to discuss in sub zero treatment process so now let me discuss first of all what is a sub zero treatment process and what exactly the sub zero treatment process see here the if you give the material if you take the material any material if you cool below the zero degree centigrade so what happens the main treatment procedure technique is if you cool below the room temperature automatically some changes may be observed what are the various changes and what is the main advantage if you cool below the room temperature see in all the other heat treatment process if you take annealing process or if you take normalizing or any other suppose say finishing process or tempering process even a tempering process is also cooled uh, that is below the lower critical temperature line and above 0 degree centigrade only that means almost above 160 degree centigrade but if you take this sub zero heat treatment process this sub zero treatment process uh, is adapted the cooling procedure that is cooled below the room temperature so that means if you cool any material below room temperature the main advantage is the wear resistance can be increased the wear resistance is important in improving the life of any materials that means for any material life of uh, that particular material is very very important if you observe the life of the material so compared to the other heat treatment process in this sub zero heat treatment process the wear resistance is more automatically the life of the material is increases and here the what is the reason behind this sub zero heat treatment process so that means why we are adopting this if you observe here the main reason are so many the so many reasons are available so many advantages are available and some disadvantages are available by adopting the sub zero treatment process but the main reason why we are adopting here it removes the retained austenite from quenched components or tools so that means whatever the marks are available the remove the austenitic structural changes or the retained austenites are available from quenched components so so all those things can be removed by doing this say sub zero heat treatment process and not only this particular thing here uh, as i already said that it increases the wear resistance of the tools that means it is nothing but stabilizing of the process or the stabilizing of the product so that means normalizing the product but in normalizing process that is in the other heat treatment process we are adopting heating at above lower critical temperature line or above upper critical temperature line but here the main cooling procedure is it is not in still it is below the 0 degree centigrade and the next one is the categories the different categories are available the various categories are available under sub zero heat treatment process especially three categories are available the first one is string fitting that means uh, sub zero heat treatment process uh, can be used in string fitting to get the better result of the material so that means uh, in string fitting process we are adopting this sub zero heat treatment process suppose whatever the industry is uh, Uh, or we can say that sheet metal industry or uh, piping industries all those industries or the tube industries all those industries require this string fitting procedure so whatever the string fitting uh, procedure they are adopting so here they can go for sub zero heat treatment process and the cold treatment anyway we will discuss the cold treatment or how it is useful and the next one is cryo treatment so these are the three categories under sub zero treatment process so let me discuss one by one 
So first of all, string fitting. So if you observe here, uh, suppose if any material is heated and after the positioning is completed, then you can go for the string fitting. So string fitting uh, allows the fitting procedure. That means exactly the material will adapt to the fitting procedure. Suppose in fitting process, especially in fitting process in industries, this is the main important procedure that they are going to adopt in tubing process or in assembling procedure. When they are assembling two components, when two shafts are going to assemble like this, so they have to fit like this. So in doing this, heating is adopted and after that cooling they have to adapt. In what manner they have to cool. So here in shin fitting, if you adapt a sub-zero heat treatment process, automatically what it will do. So the string fitting here, it reduces the diameter of the steel shaft so it can readily be assembled. So that means in giving this string fitting procedure, sub-zero heat treatment process will helpful. So in that manner, this string fitting, that is the sub-zero heat treatment process is very, very used very much useful procedure in all most all industries and that especially in string fitting and here the whatever the first in first step the metals expand when heated or contract on cooling so that means if it is heated it will expand when it is cooled it will uh, contract so this will happen and the string fitting whatever the procedure that we are saying here which is used in uh, that is uh, the cold treatment process or compared to other heat treatment process in this fitting sub zero heat treatment process is very much useful it is a convenient technique in assembling parts so without assembly uh, we can say that there is no industry so in all assembled industries this shink fitting is used that means shink fitting procedure is used and what whenever shink fitting is going to be used this sub zero heat treatment process is adapted and when tolerances, especially tolerances are important for the customers or in attracting the market. So when we want to give the better tolerances, that means the best tolerances or the minute tolerances when we make on some precision materials, then we can go for the string fitting, that is a sub-zero heat treatment process, or very close, there is an interference fit. So for all these things, this is the best process, sub-zero heat treatment process. And shaft whatever the shaft that you have taken that is cooled in order to decrease its diameter so a little bit maybe 0 0.0001 mm etc so like that we can adapt the better tolerances by using the string fitting here and it is, uh, whatever the after the cooling is adapted that means uh, after decreasing the diameter then it is going to be assembled with related parts whatever the parts that you have taken see when we are Assembling or when we are fitting those things, so you, again you have to go for room temperature. So that means after sub zero heat treatment process is completed, then you have to remove those parts and you have to maintain the room temperature. Then automatically fitting procedure, the string fitting can be completed. That means that two parts can be assembled after this sub zero heat treatment process is completed. Then the second category is cold treatment. This is somewhat like another process. The main step or the main category in sub-zero heat treatment process of what we are doing here. This is the cold treatment that means sub-zero heat treatment. Uh, this completes the metallurgical phase transformation. So this treatment especially concentrating on phase transformation of austenite into martensite. See, any material that is a steel, especially steel, wants to change austenite. If you want to go for heat treatment, you must heat the material until it reaches the austenite. After it reaches the austenite, if you want to get the hard structure, you have to cool uh, rapidly. So that means martensitic structure, a distracted structure or a pile of straw type of structure will get because of the martensite. See, austenite into martensite during the hardening of steels via quenching or temper heat treatment. So that means both these represents are represented. That means cold treatment. We can say that these are the cold treatment process. The tempering process that we are adapting, that means it may be a tempering, it may be a quenching. So both these, we can say that the cooling procedure that we are adapting is some zero heat treatment process. That means below the zero temperature, below the zero degrees centigrade. 
See here, what that uh, changes. That means austenite. This is the austenitic structure, microstructure. You can observe here. This is the martensitic structure, very very distracted structure. You can say that a pile of uh, straws, maybe at one place. So that is the martensitic structure. But the austenitic structure is a little bit uh, different from the martensitic structure. If you cool rapidly, this austenite is going to change like this. That is the martensitic structure. And uh, you can observe here. This is the time temperature transformation diagram. So this is the lower critical temperature line. Below the lower critical temperature line, these transformations are going to happen by giving various uh, heat treatment process. So in this sub-zero heat treatment process, this is below the room temperature, and uh, these two are transformation lines here. This is the transformation. This red line, curved line, transformation beginning line. This is transformation ending line. The left side is austenite, which is completely unstable here at this region, and it has to be cooled. So that means we have to select which cooling procedure that we have to adapt, whether it is a sub-zero or a temperate process. Temperate process is also a slow cooling process uh, at room temperature, but the sub-zero process compared to the quenching, especially quenching, quenching will give the zero degree centigrade only, but the sub-zero heat treatment process will give under zero temperature. So that is the main advantage of this sub-zero heat treatment process. And uh, a lot of structural changes you can observe by doing sub-zero treatment process. And if you see the full treatment for higher alloy and carburized steels is an additional step in the heat treatment hardening process. The, uh, we can say that uh, after carburizing, that means carbon is added to the steels. Here, this cold treatment is an additional step in the heat treatment hardening process. That means in improving the hardening process after carburizing process is completed. That means after carbon is carburizing, means carbon is added to the steel to increase the hardness. If you complete this step, after this process is completed, then you can go for this cold treatment, which is a sub-zero heat treatment process. And this uh, temperature, you can observe the temperature range here, almost minus 70 to 120 degrees centigrade. So this is the temperature range, which uh, because of this cold treatment, it completes the transformation. As I said in earlier, it changes from austenite to martensitic structure. That means uh, harder and uh, stronger structure. So that means we will get harder and stronger structure by doing a cold treatment process. And uh, if you observe the cryo treatment, third category of uh, this uh, heat treatment process, that means sub zero heat treatment process. The first treatment process uh, is uh, string fitting, the second treatment process is a cold treatment, the third treatment procedure, that is the sub zero treatment procedure, is a cryo treatment. So, what is the cryo treatment here? So, what we are going to do in cryo treatment? Here, the cryo treatment with liquid nitrogen so that means here the with liquid nitrogen it creates the conditions for subsequent nucleation that means increase of very fine carbides in li steel so that means if you undergone if any material that means steel uh, the procedure is if you want to do the cryo treatment you have to go for with the liquid nitrogen if you add the liquid nitrogen if you cool the material in liquid nitrogen, then automatically it creates the conditions for the subsequent nucleation. That means increase of very fine carbides. So this heat treatment, the cooling is done in liquid nitrogen. So which is the main reason to cause the nucleation of fine carbides? Compared to any other heat treatments, it will not generate. But if you adapt this cryo treatment to the material, then we can observe these many changes. That means a very fine carbides can be generated. So almost if you observe the temperature with the help of liquid nitrogen, if you observe this much temperature is adapted, that means with the liquid nitrogen, you can observe minus 120 degrees centigrade. And you have to keep this particular temperature, that means at this temperature, the material has to be kept almost 34 hours. And sometimes it may be longer, depends on the particle size, depends on the conditions. If you want to increase more or fine carpets, very fine carpets, so that means if you increase the number of hours automatically, we can get very fine carpets. So this is the main change, this is the temperature range and this is the time that we have to keep the material 
and the procedure is represented as a cryo treatment the material has to be kept at minus 120 degree centigrade for 34 hours or more longer time and the main advantage that means because of this cryo treatment what is the main advantage for any material the main advantage is it improves the wear resistance for after that is the carbide participation is available after carbide participation the main advantage is wear resistance is happened and uh, so you can see the temperature process here if you observe the tempering process is here this is the room temperature the cryogenic temperature is here that means below 0 degree centigrade and uh, you can see the change how the cooling has been adapted in the cryogenic temperature or the sub zero degree process the third category so this is the temperature range and you have to cool for 30 so that means uh, almost after the material this is a starting assume that this is the room temperature after the material reaches from room temperature to the cryogenic temperature almost say minus 120 degree centigrade at this temperature you have to hold the material around 30 hours so sometimes more than 30 hours after that you can leave the cryogenic temperature if you leave the cryogenic temperature again it will reach to the room temperature like this the temperature increases to the room temperature then you again you can go for the temperature process so this is the process that we are adopting in maintaining the cryogenic treatment the main advantage of this cryogenic temperature or the cryogenic uh, treatment is we will get the wear resistance the material will get the wear properties that means the increase of the wear resistance and uh, the overview you can see the overview of uh, sub zero heat treatment process the shrink fitting the main advantage in the object is the main why we are want to go the shrink fitting procedure uh, for any material especially in shafts that is the temporary change inside that means it is only a temporary change after once the fitting is completed again it get back to the original size that is very very important so we cannot get this type of shrink fitting with any other procedure the only sub zero heat treatment process will help in giving the temporary change in size in cold treatment process the main thing that we have discussed is transformation of retained arsenide to martensite and especially it increases the hardness and the stability is available the dimension stability is important for any material that we will get with the help of cold treatment process and the cryo treatment of the steels it increases the wear resistance through carbide participation so these are the main objectives and overview of sub zero heat treatment process for metals or materials so i hope you have understood the sub zero heat treatment process in next coming uh, sessions we will discuss uh, some more points thank you thank you one and all